Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. In Hebrew they say Shalom, in Arabic we say Salam, in English we say Peace. However, He is the Peace. When you believe in Christ, you are with the King of Peace. When you believe in Muhammad, you are with the devil. I see many comments made by Muslims and all of them they are saying Christian friends lying, Christian friends not telling the truth. And actually one of them, his name, is Islam is the truth. And I wonder how that can be true. My friend, you are welcome to call me and show me how Islam is the truth. As I know that God, he knew what he's talking about. You know what? Maybe you have your own logic. I hope he is listening. Is he still there? The one who called himself Islam is the truth. I mean, how Islam is the truth? And your God, Allah, he have an IQ of little kid. Let me give you an example. Not limited. Not limited. Remember that. Let us say, for the sake of argument, Allah is God. Have you ever heard of a God? As an example, chapter 3, verse number 65, he say this. Read with me and laugh. Huh. The page is not opening. Oh, I forgot. I did not say, inshallah. Hold on. I will shave my 20-foot beard if you can bring me someone and he debate me and he mentioned to me this verse because we will die laughing at the stupidity of the one who made this verse, whoever he is. So the God of, Allah, of Islam, Allah, saying, Ye people of the book, which is us, Christians and Jews, why dispute thee about Abraham when the law and the gospel were not revealed till after him? Have you no understanding? <laughs> this is God talking? <laughs> what is your what, what do you eat for in the morning, my friend? Mr. Allah. Look at this chipati. So if you came after Abraham, you don't dispute about Abraham. Isn't it Muhammad is the last one? I will go with your logic. I will go with the logic of Allah. The one who come after Abraham, he cannot dispute about Abraham. Okay, that's me. Uh, the Jews, they cannot dispute with people who were in the time of Abraham. Christian, they cannot dispute with the Jews because Jews were before them. And Muslim cannot dispute neither with the Christian, neither with the Jews, neither with people in the time of Abraham. That is God talking or a donkey talking? Where is the guy who calls himself Islam is the truth? Are you there? Based in Allah's statement, Allah, he lost the debate because uh, Muslims are the last one. Muhammad is the last one. The one who came after, he cannot dispute with the one come before him. As simple as that. This is what it says. Are you there, my friend? How this is can be God? You tell me. So now if you call me, I will say to you, okay, let us go by, do you accept Allah judgment? You say, yes, sure. Okay. I cannot debate with the Jews because Jews came before me. So they are more right, according to the Quran. But you Muslim cannot debate with me too, because I came before you. So Muhammad, he have no answers. And he come with this stupid answer. Hmm? What happened to those Muslims? They were texting like crazy before I go live on air. The second I go live on air, they are gone. Where are they? Hmm? Actually, in the same chapter, as, as long as I am there, just to show you the stupidity of this book, Look at this. Abraham was not a Jew, <laughs> nor a Christian. <laughs> Unbelievable. You must be genius, man.
Abraham was not a Jew and he was not a Christian. And how Abraham will be a Jew, you idiot? Do you know what Jew mean? Do even the one who made the Quran knew what the word Jew mean? So how the father, the grandfather of the Jew, not the father, the grand grandfather of the Jew, he is going to be a Jew. Stupidity. Somebody give him like uh, some protein, some uh, vitamin, D, like I don't know, some, take him to Corona Hospital. This guy who they call him Allah, obviously he was infected by high level of Corona. Abraham was not a Jew. If we ask Zach and Naik about this issue, for sure Zach and Naik have an answer. But that's it. The Christian they claim that they are following Abraham. And they do what they believe, they are following Abraham. But the truth is, Abraham was not a Christian and he wanted to do. He wanted to do? He wanted to do. That, that is genius, man. I mean, that, that's it. We are Christian. We have nothing to say. And Abraham was a Muslim. Hold on. Abraham, he was a Muslim. But you Muslim, you say that Moses was a Muslim. And Isa was a Muslim. So the second you say a Jew, you are saying a Muslim, you idiot. Do you see the contradiction? Because when you say, let me let me show you, hold on. Give me a second. Isn't it the Quran says that those who they those who they are Jews and those who they are Nasara, they are going to go to heaven? Why they will go to heaven? Because supposedly they are Muslims. Chapter 2, verse number 62. Hello. And even the Sabians who worship the stars are Muslims, which is very funny. So those who believe in the Quran, those are the follower of Muhammad, and those who they are following the Jewish scriptures, thank you very much. And those who they are the Christians, that's wonderful. And the Sabian who worship the stars, all and who whoever and any who believe in Allah, they will go to heaven. Okay. I will go with the logic of Muslim. They say that Musa was a Muslim, Isa was a Muslim, Christian, they were Muslims, and Jews were Muslims. So how we can function with the other verse here? When you say that Abraham was not a Jew and not a Christian. Are we listening, guys? If he promised them in chapter 2, verse number 62, that he will go to heaven if you are a Christian or a Jew. Why they will go to heaven? Because simply they are Muslims. Because only Muslims can go to heaven. Isn't it the Quran it says at the end of Allah Islam? And the religion for Allah is Islam. Huh? Chapter 3, verse number 19. Religion before Allah is Islam. So anyone, if you are a Christian or if you are a Jew, if you are Abraham, if you are you are a Muslim in Islam. And here you see the stupidity of the one who fabricated the Quran. Because in one side he say, Abraham was not a Christian, neither was a Jew. And one side he say that Moses was a Jew, Isa was, sorry, was, a, was a Muslim, Abraham was a Muslim, uh, 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 Jesus was a Muslim, and those who follow him, they are Muslims too, and even they are promised to go to heaven. Any Muhammadan in the chat, he have something to say? Hello? I wonder how, I wonder why the intelligence when Islam come says goodbye. And I know what I can see, crazy Allah around me. What is that, man? The language of heaven is Arabic. Well, the Muslims are very confused about those things. I mean, like, you know, some they say it is Aramaic, some they say it's Arabic, some, eh, you know. Islam is a collection of fiction. Where is the Muslims who were posting in the chat? I mean, those people, they were attacking me in the chat for the last two, two hours. I saw them, you know, I like, I check from time to time. 
the chat. And now they are bingo, gone. Where are you? Anyone want, want to drink some? Uh, I'm drinking uh, this code in uh, we call it chocolate. Cocoa, cocoa, not no, not coca, not not cocaine. Coco, coco, uh, coco. By the way, in case you do not know, Allah is the one who made the coco. <laughs> and you know, when you say to me that you know Islam is the religion of truth, I mean, can you find me something truthful in this card? Like what? Seven seven seven. Can you help me, my friend? You do not need help. You have a you have the the agent code of uh, James Bond. You are the last one need help. Seven seven seven. I need help. Hello. So here we go. I'm going to give you an offer. Post for us in the chat. Anything can be considered truthful in Islam. <clears throat> the angel of death in Islam is Israel. Israel is the same angel which a prophet Moses he did box him and he took off his eye and by the way this is a true story I witnessed I was there very well known story brother hmm. <clears throat> uh, let us see the hadith Let us see. All those stories, you know, uh, Muhammad, he... Uh, I don't know what's wrong with this website. Huh. Let us see. Let us try to find different source. This one cannot be found. We will find. Here we go. Here we see the story, which is a true story, by the way. I saw it, and even uh, Musa's he have his camera on live on air when this happened. The angel of death, who says that? Muhammad, supposedly. Uh, when when Allah he sent the angel of death to Musa's, which means to take his life, you know, to take his, his soul. He went to him. He went to who? To the angel of death. Be my witness. Muslims, Allah is God of the truth. And as long Allah is the God of the truth, Muhammad, he will tell nothing but the truth. I mean, we have to admit. So when the angel of death, death was sent to Moses, Moses, he slapped him severely. What he did? No, severely, more severe. Even harder. Again, and again, and again, and again. Okay, Moses is getting tired now. Spoiling one of his eyes. And the angel went back to Allah. The angel went where? Back to Allah. What happened? And he said to Allah, You send me, you send me to a slave who does not want to die. Allah restored his eye and said, Okay, no problem, no problem. Go back. Okay, you guys are funny. Go back. Okay, I will send you again. <laughs> And you call yourself Islam is the truth? Obviously, this is a true story. And Muhammad never lied. And I just discovered, by the way, that Allah is a surgeon. You know, he, he restored his eye. Like, you know, uh, 
because you know you have to think about it when when uh, Moses is slapped the face of uh, many time of the angel and his eye came out like boing it's not easy trust me it's not easy it's not easy to be an angel and now your eye is coming out like a sore And now you go all the way to the seven heaven and your eye is coming out like this. Very horrible. Very scary. And now you are an angel with one eye. People, they will think that you are the Dajjal. Isn't it Prophet Muhammad, he said that the Dajjal have one eye. So now we have an angel of death, he have one eye too. Mashallah. Islam is a truth. So what we learn from this? We learn that I can fight death and I can beat the angel of death and I can extend my life. All what you need to do is to learn some karaoke. And right away the angel eye will come out and the angel will go to all of us and tell me to die. He didn't want to die. He didn't want to die. It looked like it's a choice. I thought if Allah, he said, B is going to be the angel of death, he went to Moses. Is that the order of Allah or the angel of death he chose to, to, to kill as he wish? The Muslim, they will say, it's the order of Allah. So where is the religion who believe if Allah wants something to be, he say B? Hello? Huh? <clears throat> Obviously, Muhammad the fool, he heard about the story of Jacob struggling with the, with the with, uh, as the Bible says, with the angel, or struggling with his Lord. And Muhammad, he was just some, some, some change, you know, in this scenario. So suddenly we have eyes is coming out. The angel eye is pooping out. The angel of death is coming to Moses, and then it's not Jacob, it's Moses. Hmm. Anyway, this is not our topic, really. I'm not going to talk about this, even though I like to hear this. Uh, remind me when I was a kid, you know, last year, you know, we used to watch cartoon. And, you know, in the cartoon, we, we learned in the cartoon, uh, like... <clears throat> that shooting stars is a missile sent by the titan god the titan god like star wars like wee, 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 wee. have you ever heard of a god he teach us in the quran that he shoot the shaitan in their a in their ass by a star and this is why the stars are created I mean, obviously, Allah is the true God. Let us go to the Quran. I like the Quran. Quran. <clears throat> Look what the Quran says about the uh, the stars, brother. It doesn't say that, CB. It doesn't say that, CB. You are lying. <laughs> read it hey brother and by the way the Quran is different from the Bible which means you can quote one verse out of all the chapter nothing will change because all this the book is stupid there's no connection between the verse before it and the verse after it like read with me what is the connection between this verse 
End this verse. End this verse. End this verse. What is this? Ah, but anyway, read with me carefully. And we have from between two brackets. When a when Muslim between two brackets, it's mean like this is of their own fabrication. But anyway, we have adorned the lowest heaven with lambs. If, 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 if. The heaven only in the lowest heaven, the, the, the stars. And look, guys, do you know that the Muslim, they claim in one of these articles about Quran miracle, they say that Allah, he made the heaven seven uh, seven liars and they say this is this is the atmosphere do you see how we get them busted easy if 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 the, if if the quran is speaking about seven liars and this is supposed atmosphere but allah says here that he put in the atmosphere the stars i mean you do not know how good your lies is and how hard it is to defeat hmm Read interpretation. Uh, guys, I will do the command of Mr. In a second, Mr. Truth, he will say, I did not ask you to read the interpretation. Uh, brother, are you sure you want me to read the interpretation? Are you sure? I will repeat my uh, 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 request for you, brother. Are you sure? Hmm? Chapter 65, verse number 5. Are you sure you want me to read the interpretation? Because I think after five seconds you will say, don't please, don't read the interpretation. I don't agree with the interpretation. Do you agree with the interpretation? But now it's too late. You're, it's you It's you who said to me, read the interpretation. So now we have to go and read the interpretation. And as long as you are the Muslim, here we have to tell you, uh, read for you the interpretation. What do you say? Okay. <clears throat> this is Ibn Kathir. As you wish, my friend. We are here in your service, brother. Let us uh, zoom in. Hold on. Let me let me make the text bigger. Remember, it's you who asked me to read the interpretation. And now, if we read the interpretation, you cannot complain about the interpretation. All right. Interpretation. Let us make the text bigger so so even the blind can see. All right. <clears throat> And indeed, we have adorned the nearest heaven with lamps, referred to the stars, which have been placed in heaven. Some moving and some stationary Allah statement. And we have made them as missiles to drive away shaitan. To pronounce them in his statement, we have made them the same type of a statement star being referred as lamps. It doesn't mean that they are actually missiles, but they are the stars in uh, 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 they are the stars in the sky. Are not a throne, rather they are meteor beneath them, and they are a throne taken from the stars. And Allah knows best. That's it. The guy he finished it with Allah knows best. Are you satisfied now? This is Ibn Kathir. Ibn Kathir, he is not, you know, I mean, he, he lived between the Syrian educated Christians, so he is trying to be smarter than the rest of the Muslims. But he admitted, they are stars. And now he's saying, those most likely they are meteor. But the Quran says, they, they are lamps, and the meteor are not lamps. Right? If we go to different interpretation, Maybe you don't like this interpretation. Let me open for you another interpretation. Give me a second, please, to give you another interpretation. <clears throat> we have all the interpretation you want. Any interpretation. You like it, we will give it to you. 67, chapter 5, verse number 5. Okay. Let us see.
And now we will say, I don't like this interpretation. <clears throat> this is Tafsir Al Jalalain. Who? Al Jalalain. Who? Al Jalalain. Who? Al Jalalain. Who? Al Jalalain. Brother, for some reason I cannot hear you. And verily, we had ordinal that of heaven enclosed to the earth with lamps, with the stars, and made the missiles against the devil. Should they attempt to listen to steel, stealth, in which case a meteor of fire detach itself from the star, and just like the brand taken from the fire, either kills the jinn and this brother and the, kill the genie. So now the Quran explained to us that Allah. This, by the way, this is the Muslim interpretation. The Quran does not say it's a meteor. It says we made the sky with lamps, and we made those lamps. Missiles, not a meteor. Here, the Muslim trying to fix it. The older the interpretation is, the more horrible it is. This is Ibn Abbas. And verily, we have beautified the world's heaven, the first heaven only, with lamps, with the stars, and we made them, i.e., the stars, missiles for the devil. <laughs> Such a sign, the same of them come to be witched. And some are killed while others are burned. True story, brother. Are you there, Mr. Truth? Here we go. We did read for you three interpretations. Which one you like more? Islam is uh, balbus. Are you there? And the funny, they call themselves Islam is the truth. It's obvious, isn't it obvious that Allah He made the star to show the shaitan in his ass, and some of them they are burnt, and some of them they are killed. And by the way, how you can do that? Shaitan he lives inside the earth. So how you can shoot him? But just to complete the story, <coughs> uh, because we don't want to miss the story, by the way. You know, I mean there is a there is a rest of the story. Christian press is hiding the rest of the story. I mean, come on. Brother, Shaitan, he climbed up to the heaven and he tried to steal information from Allah. Chapter 15, verse number 18. Yes, brother. This is like CIA business, KGB. Shaitan, he want to hear what Allah, he ordered the angels. So he go there, brother. And Shaitan now, he is going to listen carefully and he is going to, I thought, by the way, I thought Allah, he speak to the angels using a code or something, but look like not. And now Shaitan is listening to the conversation between Allah and the angels. Hmm? And now he start translating. Read carefully. The Muslim they say to you, there's ton there's tons of article by the way about those verses. It says, and we uh, 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 we protected the sky. You know, we protected the sky. But they will not tell you that what Allah protected the sky from. They say, oh, the sky protected. This is the atmosphere. How Allah? How how the Quran knew that? It is stupid idiot. This is about fiction. This is about protecting the, the, the sky from inside out, not the opposite. Shaitan, he cannot go up to the sky. And the fabricator, they made articles saying this is about the atmosphere. So look how fiction and stupidity became science. And we have guarded. We have guarded them from every cursed devil. What? We guarded what? The heavens. Allah guarded the heaven from the devil and if the devil he tried to go there what he will do he will try what Scooby Scooby do do Scooby Scooby do what Scooby Scooby do he spy he open his ears and he listen to the conversation 
so he can spy at Allah. But any that gain hearing by stealth is pursued by a flaming fire. <laughs> shaitan like, ah! And now shaitan, he go to the emergency room and they ask him, why you have a burning spot in your ass, brother? Because genie, they have hospital too, hello? So he's a brother for them. So the nurse, you know, in the genie hospital, I can imagine, like they have a nurse with big, uh, <clears throat> big balloon, you know. Hey, honey, why you have burn in your ass? The genie would say, oh, sister, I was. <coughs> Take it easy, honey. It's easy. It's not easy. The burn in your ass is so big. <coughs> I'm trying to tell you what happened. I tried to spy at Allah and I went and I heard all the conversation. To the end sister <laughs> and okay what happened after that well <clears throat> suddenly i felt something in my butt it was a star very hot allahu akbar and the brother you survive it yes sister because i was wearing the diaper of halal Halal diaper, commercial break. If you have a problem and you are going to spy at Allah, you need to use halal diaper. Halal diaper can protect your anus, can protect your butt from all kinds of fire. And it can be used even for a firefighter. Trust me, it's a trustworthy product. If you like halal diaper, call halal diaper immediately. 1-800-HALAL-DIBER. Back to the program. What happened to you, Islam is the truth? This is the truth of your religion? Where is the Muslim who brag about the Bible is corrupted? Jesus is not God. Quran is the truth. And we just, it not, we did not even read anything yet. We are just uh, taking a snack. This is a snack for a Christian prince. We did not start. Shall we start the program? Commercial break? Let me talk to the director. Do, do we have commercial break? A commercial break. If you like to read more about Islam, please read the Christian Prince books. You can find them everywhere, exception of the of the. Like, <laughs> sorry, we have technical difficulty. But <laughs> what the heck is that, man? This is Islam, and this is the religion of the truth, and this is, uh, and you are trying to convince me to convert to Islam so I will get virgins? And what is the guarantee they are virgins? How we knew they are virgins? What if they are not? If there is a return policy or something? I'm really, really convinced that Islam is a true religion. I mean, look, the Quran is full of wisdom and dumb. I mean, wisdom. Isn't it obvious, brother? Oh boy. Who is a Muslim? He want to give us another proof that Islam is a true religion. Forget about this, you know. For, look, hold on, what forget? Look at the verse after it. And the earth we have spread out. وَأَلْقَيْنَا فِيهَا رَوَاسِي Look at the false translation. Yes, the, the Quran says that Allah he made the earth flat. This is true. And actually the earth flat, especially where I live, it's very flat here. Look at my room. And then Allah, he set mountains in the top of the earth. Is it true really that Allah He set mountains in the top of the earth? Let us see. By the way, all those things, the Muslims have tons of articles claiming those about science trying to fool you. But it doesn't work with me. 
and he has set up it doesn't say set up it says wa alqa wa alqa he throw in the top this is what alqa mean anyone can go right now search what the word alqa mean wa alqa wa like isn't like and in english alqa he throw he throw you can copy this word take it to google translation and you will see the, the meaning. It's mean a throw. So according to Islam, Allah, he throw in the top of the earth mountains. Why? Because he don't want the earth to move on you, to shake on you. In fact, areas where there's mountains, the more mountains you have, the more you have earthquake. As an example, all of Japan is mountains. And they have a lot of earthquake, I think 2,000 on average of a, a day. So having a mountain will not fix the earth. They might say to you well, in science, mountain uh, like uh, help to reduce. But it doesn't stop the shaking, right? And mountains actually, they happen because the earth is moving. Mountain is not something coming from inside, from, from the top of the ground. It's coming from inside the ground. An area where is either there's a volcano or there's two tectonic plate are hitting each other and that pressure will cause a mountain. And that means that pressure is caused by a movement. You can go right now and search in Prophet Google, peace upon him, how mountains are generated. Actually, let us do it now. Hold on. How mountains is formed. Okay, here we go. We found how mountains is formed, Rodar. Now, who is the stupid? Mountains are formed because simply there is a there is a movement, and because there is a movement between two plates in the ground in the earth, that area where those two plates they meet. Is going to cause a pressure from the two sides and that will lift up the ground and this is what mountain ha how, how the mountain happened according to the Quran and this is one of the way of format by the way the other format is the volcano where the magma the lava come out so what the Quran is saying that Allah he placed mountains in the top of the earth is a lie it's a stupid If we go right now and we read the interpretation for this verse, shall we? Chapter 16, verse number 15. So the Muslim, they will not say we're making things up. 16, 15. Go ahead. Hmm. Zoom out. Hmm. And he has cast. You see, guys? I said to you, Alqa means throw. Did you see? Do you see how the line translation? And he has has cast into the earth firm mountains, not hills, firm mountains that is the earth. Quack not with you. So the stupid maker of the Quran, he thought, that, okay, the earth is a flat, it's like a sheet. And Allah, he placed mountains like a rock in the top of it so the sheet will not fly. And they have thousands, if not millions of videos about scientific miracles of the Quran. Do you see how they lie to you? They, you know, this is the, the Islamic propaganda and agenda. They switch what is stupid to be scientifically accurate. So they take words and they change the translation and they make it fit with something called scientific when the fact is the opposite. As an example, I'm sure many of you heard 
that the Muslim they say that the Quran say the salty water and the fresh water they don't mix correct and they have videos in YouTube about this miracle how amazing etc does the Quran really say what they are saying uh, let us laugh together Chapter 25, verse number 53, and chapter 55, verse number 20, speak about this, uh, about the Barzakh. Read really carefully. It is he who has let free the two bodies of the flowing water. One is a platable and sweet, and the other is salt and bitter. Yet has made the barrier between them. A partition that is forbidden to be passed. I mean, the lie is exposed even in the verse. It says they are forbidden to pass. Science doesn't say anything about this, as the Quran claim. Science says when you have a current of salty water or fresh water in the ocean, that water will take time to mix. It doesn't say it will never mix, and you don't you don't need an ocean to do that. Go a cup of water which is fresh water and get another cup, mix salt with it, and put them together. Let us see if they are forbidden to mix or not. You know what I mean? If they are forbidden to be mixed, does it say in front of you, it is forbidden for them to pass? People, does it say that? Does it say it's forbidden for them to pass, or I'm making things up? Hello? Hello? You want some sad music with it? Ah, you are a music guy. Aha! Man! Why you did not tell me from the beginning that you are a music guy? We have, you know, we, we are here to make our customers happy. Okay, we will make a, mu a, a music with, with this uh, a drama. We call this a drama. So the Quran confirmed that this water will never pass the other water. Never. It's forbidden. This is how easy to defeat the lie. And not only that, we go to the interpretation. The interpretation says clearly that Allah He made the salty water and the and the and the fresh water. They are separated between two body of land. Which means the stupid God of Islam He think that salty water and fresh water they are two different water and they never have to do anything with each other how we can prove that let us go to the interpretation where is the guy who asked me for interpretation you don't want interpretation do you want interpretation or you don't want interpretation chapter 25 verse number 53 let us go there Ibn Kathir See how easy to spank them. Islam is the easiest cult to spank. All what you need, just do your study, do your homework. Knowledge, my friend, knowledge. Knowledge is the only way to fight deception. Otherwise, anyone can deceive you. When you do not know, you do not know. Anyone can lie to you and, you know. So if we read here, <coughs> It is he who said the free two seas. First of all, the Quran says two seas, which is wrong. The fresh water is not a sea. The Quran believe that this is two seas. Marj al Bahrain. How in the world the stupid maker of the Quran thought that the fresh water is a sea? Where we can find the sea? So Muhammad he believed that the Water which we have under the ground is a sea. We are floating in the top of a sea. And why this is coming from, if you remember, you remember before we mentioned to you the chapter of uh, noon? Who remember the chapter of noon? Noon. noon. Who, for, who remember noon? Uh, you know, about noon. Which is uh, uh, Al-Qalam.
Read carefully. From his narration and the authority of Ibn Abbas, Ibn Abbas is the cousin of Muhammad, that he said regarding the interpretation of Allah saying noon. Noon, he says, Allah swear by noon, which is the wheel that carry the earth on its back while in the water. Now we knew where Muhammad he got this from. Muhammad, he think we are in the top of a sea. And this is a fresh sea. How we know it's a fresh sea? Read carefully. If you go down, you will see it says that. Let us continue reading, you know. <clears throat> oh. It's a wheel, carry the earth in its back. And it's true, by the way, I saw it. I saw it myself. Okay, bring the Quran for me. I swear by Allah. It's true. While in the water, I'm so glad that the whale, the whale is in the water, not to fly in the space. And beneath, which is the ball. Wonderful. That's explained who carried the whale now. Like, I mean, come on. Somebody have to carry the whale. And under the ball, there's a rock. Makes sense. I mean, the ball will stand in what? Hello? There's a rock. And under the rock, the dust. Dust? Yes, brother. The bees, the bees. And then no one knows what under the dust save Allah. And look at the stupidity. He just said, no one knows what under the dust save Allah. And then now he says to us, under the rock is there's 4,000 uh, 4, 4, cracks. Do, do you, he just stopped. He just said there, no one knows what is under the dust save Allah. Did you see it? And after two lines, the stupid, he forgot that he just said, no one knows what under the dust. And then he continues, he says, the whale is in the sea called Adwad. And it's like a small ball in a huge sea, the sea in Hollywood Rock, whereby there is 4,000 cracks, and from each crack, water spring come out. You know what, my friend? You have to have 4,000 cracks in your head to believe in the cult of Muhammad. Huh? What is this? <clears throat> now going back so those water are forbidden to meet if we go and read the interpretation of Ibn Kathir you will see <clears throat> that this water is a sweet water and this water is a salty etc blah 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 let us see how those water mix or not mix <clears throat> read carefully and Allah, he has set a barrier as a complete partition between them, meaning between the, wa the water, the fresh water, sweet water, and salty water. Barzakhan. What Barzakhan mean? Which is a dry land. But a barrier means a partition, which is a dry land. Do you see how we got them busted? So they post, they post for you videos in YouTube showing you uh, like a two colored uh, water and say praise be to Allah Allah he said in the Quran that the water don't mix praise be to Allah when the Quran using the word in Arabic clearly it says Barzakh and Barzakh is nothing but a dry land do you see it even it says in Arabic the word Hajar you know or Hajar, coming from the word Hajar, there is a barrier which is a land. Do you see how they lie to you? Why we have only 900 something here? What is the rest? Okay, I will change the topic. I will change the topic. I will I will talk about something more attractive. Let us switch to something more attractive. Okay, as long as we talk about something attractive. So we let us talk about something attractive for men first. 
something convincing will make a lot of men right now convert to Islam. Kawaibun atrab. Ta -da -da, ta -da -da, ta -da -da. Look at this. Beautiful. Hmm? Have you ever heard of a beautiful God like Allah? He promised us women with big boobs. Isn't it beautiful? We have to be honest here. This is not only scientifically true. This is horny true. So brother, if you accept Allah, brother, Allah will reward you with women with big boobs. In case you never saw boobs before, brother, I will do it to you in a halal way. Boobs are like a car tire, like this, brother. And in the middle, brother, there's like something like a screw here, brother. And they are two, not four. And they are from one side, which means if you go the other side, brother, there is no boobs. Only on one side, brother. And those, brother, those boobs, brother, they are so big and beautiful. And they are... In the top of that, let me explain to you because most of you are under the age of 70 and you do not know what I'm talking about, I'm very sore. And this is where you get knowledge from, from here. Hmm? Those boobs, brother, because they are so big, brother, so huge, brother, if you suffer from, let us say you are driving your car, brother, and then, brother, you hit somebody in front of you. Those boobs, if you put them in front of you, they will protect you and they will do boing boing. It's like, brother, the same as the pillow they do for you these days in the car for safety. And here, brother, you see how Allah is thinking about your safety, protecting you by the boobs of those women. So we can say that those boobs are not only for sexual reason at the dirty mind of a Christian prince, they are exist for safety reason too. And that will reduce, brother, your insurance. This is God's promise. God, he promised me women with big boobs. I'm truly convinced. <clears throat> and look what the connection between the big boobs and the verse after it. A cup full to the brim, may Allah bring you. So Allah now, he will give me big boobs. And now Allah will give me a cup. And this cup is full. Huh? To where? To the brim. It makes sense. You know, if you have those boobs, you need next to them a cup. Allahu Akbar, brother. And the cup have to be full, brother. Imagine the cup is empty and they are half full. That makes sense. This is the book of God. And the verse before it says you will have a grape. I'm not sure why co not coconut. I mean, coconut will be better. <laughs> when is the guy who say Islam is true? What happened to them? Why did they disappear? Look how quiet they are. Did you notice how quiet they are? The brother, is the boobs too are full to the brim too? Or only the cup? Like there is something like surprise, surprise inside those boobs. Because I'm really worried. I'm afraid that we suckle those boobs and then we get gas. What is inside those boobs? Okay, we get the idea that they are big. But what is the guarantee that what is inside the boobs is not something harmful? Hmm.
after I finish my program, the 1000 lie of a Christian prince. I show it in the screen. Those are lies. Yes, they are lies for sure. Those are the lies. To the brim. So now we have a garden. And this garden is enclosed. And inside the garden there is a grave. And next to the grave there is boobs. And next to the boobs there is a cup. And this cup is full to the brim. Truly, truly, Allah must be the true God. Who can argue with that? All of us, we dream about having a full cup to the brim. Who don't want to have a full cup to the brim? You made me laugh when you said the Abdul are, they have no energy because they are fasting. My friend, no Muslim fast. I am from the Middle East, I grew up there. When I was a kid, I remember. I was a I mean, we are just like uh, in the elementary school, very, very small, you know. So I went with a Muslim kid to his, his house and we went inside the house and his mom, she have cookies. So we start eating, it was Ramadan. And then when we are leaving, he said, wait, 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 wait. I said, what? He said, hold on. And he grabbed some salt and he put it in his lips. I said to him, what are you doing? He did not answer because he cannot answer. The, the, he have to stop talking so the salt will not fail from his lips. And then we left. I said, why, why you do put this salt thing? He said, this is what my dad and my family do. Because we eat in Ramadan, but when we go out, we put salt in our lips so our lips will look dry. I said, okay, that's wonderful. Mm -hmm. All right, now we learn a trick. So they go inside the house, they eat like a goat, and then when they want to go out, they put salt on their lips, and the salt will make your skin dry, your lips are dry, because going to suck all the water, and that will make your lips like you did not drink for long. And him and his family, this is a kid, how he will learn, the whole family do that. Actually, if you go right now and search in, in Google, you will find that the price of food in the Middle East, in Islamic countries, goes skyrocketing. Why? Is that because Muslims are fasting or because Muslims are eating more? The answer is simple. They are not fasting, they are eating more. Let us type in Google, food price, Ramadan. Food price, Ramadan. Hold on. I'm typing in Arabic. Food price, Ramadan. The second you type that, you will find that food price go crazy in Ramadan. Read with me. This is Muslims. This is Muslim news agencies reporting how the food price in Ramadan goes skyrocket. Why food price skyrocket during Ramadan? Why? Because they are fasting, brother. They don't eat. Nobody buying food. In fact, they are eating food like crazy. You see, now because of Corona, the price of gas is very down. There's many reasons, but one of them, people are not driving, people at home, way more or less people using gas. So the price, what will happen? Too much gas, price will go down very much. Food is the same. If nobody buying food only to survive because they are fasting, then the food price will go down, not the opposite.
right? <clears throat> so when they say they are fasting, it is, it is a lie. They don't fast. It is the month of belly dancing, the month of drinking, the month of smoking, the month of shisha. Go and see. Go and see. Anyway, this is not not our proof that Islam is bad. You see, I mean, people they do bad stuff. People they can be good, they can be bad. This is not really our uh, not not our topic. But you mentioned it about fasting. I find it that it's a hypocrisy. You see, the Bible says if you fast, if you fast, you, like you wash your face, you do like you, you don't show that you are fasting. You you don't have to show. You should not show. For this is you do something between you and your Lord. Muslim when they fast, they have to tell everybody. They put it in TV. Anybody, my brother, I cannot talk to you. I'm fasting right now. So every the whole world will collapse in, in their countries. And this is the time when the economy of those countries go down to zero because nobody works. They sleep all the day. What is what is the point of this fasting? If you don't wake up until it is that the food time, or what you did, you, you just switch the day upside down. There's no fasting. I fast already. I fast. I, I eat once every 24 hours. But I can call that fasting. And Muhammad was fasting, but he was kissing and sucking the tongue of Aisha. I mean, this is a lot of fasting. And Aisha, she said, well, who of you can control his private part like the Prophet? Suddenly, Aisha, she is not a virgin, she is expert. She had many men in her bed and she knew that Muhammad, he is the best one to control his private part. And what he was doing? Kissing her and sucking her tongue. And what is the excuse? Who of you can control his, uh, <coughs> like Muhammad? Well, I can tell he control it very much to the point he is fasting and he cannot stop kissing you and fondling you. I mean, do you see how much control he have? <clears throat> that is a lot of control. Very much controlling. Even when she have her period, which is very disgusting for a man to do, he ordered her to tie a sheet around her waist. If the bleeding was heavy, And here in the translation, they say, and he would embrace her. The fact he was not embracing her, it says, you bashiruni. He is doing sexual things with her. He fondled her. And actually, here we go in the front translation. They hide it in the first one. In the other one, it says clearly. The messenger of Allah went to fondle anyone of us during her period <laughs> uh, Muslims what fundal mean may Allah fundal the Prophet the Prophet if you want to fundal anyone of us during her period he used to order her to put an Izar and start fundling her That is the power of the prophet who control himself. And then Aisha, she said, hmm. <laughs> none of you could control his sexual desire as the prophet could. Do you see it? Anytime you see a reference in the screen, that means they are posting, but in the case you see the view, video later, you just type few words of those in the search engine 
for this uh, for the like sunnah.com this is a this is a muslim website called sunnah.com and you will find the reference always anything we showed you just do that like wanted to fund anyone of us etc just type it in the screen you will find the reference now our topic is why islam fear to be questioned the answer is here the second you question the, the, the same second you find that islam is a fraud and muhammad is a bad person sick person this is why even muhammad he made in the quran a verse saying ask not questions and he explained why you should not ask questions because if you ask those questions you will leave islam verse 101 and the funny, it's called number even 101. It's a miracle, brother. <clears throat> Don't ask questions. Islam cannot stand for questions. The second you ask questions, Islam collapses. Now, for those who they are from Indonesia, I want you to contact your Ustad and tell them, can we have a real debate? And you know, if their excuse is that the Christian prince, he might hang up on us, make it clear that anyone who is a sheikh, anyone who is a sheikh, I'm willing to talk to him. Let us say we will debate for four hours. I will never hang up on you. I will never mute you. never and if i do you are the winner as simple as that the topic is why i should be a muslim or you don't want this topic change the name as you wish i don't know just come to me If four hours is too much, we make it a three. If a three is too little, we make it 24 hours. Who is a Muslim cleric he like to? A moderator, we see. A moderator, that's mean that he can talk and I cannot talk, right? Until he finish, right? This is not a debate. If a moderator is to be there, so just like if things go crazy to cool it down, no problem. But both of us should be allowed to talk in the same time so we, he can corner me, I can corner him. Otherwise, this garbage five minutes for him, five minutes for me is not a debate. Because he will get away with what he say, I will get away with what I say. There is no need for that. Equal rule for me and him. So he want to have a, have a moderator, but the moderator does not mean that time for him time for me the moderator is if like things go out of control he can say okay guys please cool down let us uh, you know that's it if this is the case no problem because the only way muslims they can get away with they call debate is this moderator garbage do you remember the debate or if we can call it debate between david wood and uh, mimi hijab david wood he asked serious questions David Wood, he made it clear. This is a serious question. The other opponent, he make it a mockery. And he did not answer. So did the moderator say to him, but he did not answer him? And you see, you have to be careful with those people because they will try to avoid answering you. So what the point now? You give me the microphone. And I will say to you, you did not answer me. What is the answer? I want the answer. And then he take the mic again for five minutes and he did not give the answer. Are you getting the point? So a real debate is crossfire debate. Otherwise, there's not, nothing called debate. A moderator, the one they do it, 
It just you say whatever you want, he say whatever I want, and then we go sleep. No. It's not me who will not talk non-stop. That's not true. I always give people, ask, go and watch all my debate with those who they call themselves a cleric, shakes. You will not find one of them. I did not allow him to talk. How I can allow him? To, I mean, we are talking at the same time. If your mic is open and my mic is open, how I will be able to make him not to talk? That's a lie. I have all my debate there. I hang up on kids who say stupid things. The second he starts saying stupid things, there's no point of talking to him because simply I'm not going to speak to somebody lying loud and open, wasting my time. When I speak to somebody, he have to be respected, respecting himself first, and not to be a liar. Now, you want to lie to me, say it doesn't say that, you have to prove it, no problem. We have hadith, we have... The second you say to me, I don't believe in the hadith, okay, go. There's no need to talk because I'm not a Muslim anymore. I don't believe in tafsir, okay, go. And you will be surprised, even they might say, I don't, I don't believe in the Quran. Like when Mimi Hijab, he says to David Wood, David Wood, he says to him, you must then believe that Allah have hand, have etc., have parts. So Mimi Hijab, all this serious question, he answered it by what? Say it. Who says so? Who says so? And people start laughing. That's the answer? What do you mean who says so? Muhammad says so. The Quran says so. All your scholars say so. So a serious question became a mockery and they start making fun of David Wood when the fact David Wood got him busted. And then the Muslim, they thought that they have like, they, 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 they won the argument. What do you mean you won the argument? Allah, he says he have a shin. Allah, he have his, he say he have hands. Your scholars, they say that, aren't you a Muslim Sunni, Mimi Hijab? He's a Muslim Sunni. So how you say who say so? So those Muslims, they will debate you only if you are very polite. And what I mean by very polite, that you will not be all over them, busting them with their lies. So Mimi Hijab was lying. David Wood was at a stage. He was a very polite person, very nice person, very gentleman. And because of that, he was able to get away somehow with his lies by saying, who said so? Those people, when they lie, you need to spank them immediately. As fast as the speed of light. And this is why they don't dare to debate me. Because I will not give them the opportunity to lie. Even David Wood, when he went to the debate, he want to shake hands with this guy, filthy man, Mimi Hijab. He refused to shake hands. You see what happened when you are polite? They complain about Christian princes not being polite. I will never be polite with people like you. Why I want to even shake my hand with someone like you, Mimi Fifi Fabricator, who edited my videos. So you need to know that the Muslims, they have their own understanding of you as a Christian when you are polite. And let me show you where this understanding came from. The Quran told the Muslims that Allah, he cursed us and he made us nice. He what? Allah, he cursed us. This is a curse. Duribat alayhim with zullah. Allah, he put a bitch of curse on us to be humiliated. So the reason Muslims, they are, cannot believe that Christian Prince is doing the opposite, that it's supposed to be that Allah, he told us we are able to humiliate them. So when a Muslim, he see a Christian, he is nice. That will come to him that Allah he cursed you, so you are humiliated, so you are you are very peaceful. You you know you you, you say to a Christian, I spit on you, you are a dog, you are etc. And the Christian says, Okay, God forgive you. 
may the Lord bless you for them that is what the Quran says Allah he bitch on them shame do you see it and this is why because they are full of shame they start refusing the hadith they start refusing the the the, the tafsir they start refusing everything because shame is upon them shame upon Muhammad's stories the only way to get away from the shame of Muhammad I will open Skype in case there is any Muslim want to call us maybe we can get someone to leave us now today the only one who would like to call is uh, the ultimate fort who is not a Muslim That's it. This is the only guy you want to call. No real Muslim want to call us. Let us see. <clears throat> Let us open Skype. And see who will leave Islam. All right. Hmm, something wrong with my Skype. It's not loading. It has restarted. <clears throat> Get a new chair? No, I did not get any new chair. Um, and this is what are you worried about now, my chair? You guys are listening even to what is under my knees happening. So now, what uh, if I fart, you will know what I ate too? Are you watching that too? You're acting like Muslims now. Muhammad is farting. Muhammad is doing poo poo. Let us see. <laughs> uh, let us see here. I have somebody want to talk with me to talk to her family so they might leave Islam that's wonderful Where is the Muslim who text me? If you are a Muslim, you like me to call you, please text me. anyone if you like me uh, no we will not talk to ultimate for he's just a kid we're gonna talk to adult uh, any I do want to call Who is Abdul? He like to call. <clears throat> I'm looking. I don't have. <clears throat> the only thing I have is a uh, text from Muslim kids. 
coding names. Um, anyone? No, no, we will not let kids. Anyone he will, you know, anyone he want to play games, we would not waste our time. If you are a person who don't believe in the hadith, you don't believe in the tafsir, you don't believe in the scholars, you believe in your own opinion about Islam, don't call me. Because we are debating Islam, we are not debating your own fabricated in your religion. We are debating a religion, supposedly is established, and there's hundreds of millions believe in it. If you have your own belief, that's new religion. Okay, well, let him text me. Text me, Mr. Liban. Mr. Liban, text me. No, no problem if you are a Shia, if you are a Shia, you know, either Shia or Sunni. But when you say you are a Shia, it means you believe in the height of the Shia. If you are a Sunni, you believe in the height of the Sunni. Okay, maybe we have a Muslim here. Let us see. He is not answering. Okay, my friend, you don't want to answer. So what are you are saying to me? If you are a Muslim, only text me to call you. Don't call me if you are not a Muslim, please. Anyone? <clears throat> who is a Muslim would like to call me just text me and I will call you back immediately anyone maybe maybe His name is Imam Murai. He don't even know what he's talking about. <laughs> Imam Murai. You see those idiots. They say Christian Prince, he say this and he say that. But the one who told them that, he don't dare even to call me. This is how terrified they are. Is that telling you something? They don't dare. Okay. All those who they make videos supposedly to prove me wrong. As long as you can prove me wrong, okay, call me. And you know, we said it clearly, if you call me and you are one of those who claim to be big guys who can refute me, I will never hang up on you. You know what? Give me your Skype. I will call you. Don't call me. Your Majesty. You are a king. Your Highness. Christian Prince humbly will call you. Still, they will not do it. Like this, Sabil Ali. Brothers and sisters, you can listen to the video carefully and you can tell this is not my voice. He made a drama because we thought it's him. What about you call me and make it you? You Muslims, you are crying for having a title, says Sabil Ali debating Christian Prince, and it's not you. But you are not, you, you have no problem that Allah replaced Jesus in the cross. And he made us think that this is Jesus. Do you see how coward they are? They make any excuse to run away. Brothers and sisters, and I'm ready to debate him. If he can't go to Zoom, Zoom, may Allah Zoom you. Who is a Muslim? He have the courage to call.
Who is a Muslim want to explain to us how Allah will shoot shaitan in his ass with the stars? No, he did not text me. No, I did not receive any text from someone his name Liban. Sabil Ahmed, yeah. Anyone? Brother, if you call me, the coward is you, Mimi. You don't even have the courage. Text from Imam Mura. You know, do you know how many Muslims they text me? They call themselves Imam Mura. <laughs> and the question: Why you are calling yourself Imam Mura? If there is no Imam Mura, you idiot! Aren't you the one who says there is no Imam Mura? Why you call yourself Imam Mura? You just admitted that Imam Mura is true. Now you know what? I will let you call me if I show you that there is Imam Mura. Are you going to spit at yourself and spit at the one who says to you there's no Imam Mura? Is that fair, guys? I will make the topic your name. And I will call you. What do you say? Say yes. Mura, say yes. Did he say yes? I'm just looking for his name. <clears throat> yeah, but do you accept to talk about Imam Murra? As long as you call yourself Imam Murra? Do you accept? I'm just trying to find your name here. I have three people, their name is Imam Mura. I'm not sure which one is you. Text me. And I will take you right away. And the topic is Imam Mura. Either people laugh at you or people laugh at me. Cool. Mura. Murro. I will call you if you're not calling. <laughs> Hello? Yes, you are Imam Murra? What? It's not my account. It's somebody else's account. I'm just using it to call you. Okay. So what do you want to say to us? Go ahead. Why are you scared of Farid, bro? Why can't you I'm scared of what? Why are you scared of Farid? I you am know, scared Fareed? of all of you to the point I am asking you now. Do you have his Skype and I will call you right now? No, no, don't tell me but, don't tell me but, don't tell me but, you, uh, you, you, don't use your butt with me. You just said I'm scared of Farid. Can you give me his Skype right now and I will call him right now? He challenged you to a public debate. Don't tell me but, how I am going to call him, you coward I'm potato. Kidding. Hold on, oh, but, 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 but. this is public debate. We have 1,000 people here. Shut up, son of Muta, son of Muta, shut up. When you say you dare to debate me, you don't say I'm going to fly to America. Are you willing to go to the Alaska? You don't need to do. Listen, potato. Listen, potato. Potato. The same you call me, I can call him. Give me his Skype. I don't know if he has Skype. I don't then know shut up, son of my. Uh, go and have sex with the with, with with your daughter, as the Quran said. And I challenge for you to say this is not true. This is what you wanna call me for. Who is the scared? The scared is the one who don't dare to give me his Skype to call him. Right now. As long as he is your Farid and he is your girlfriend. The one who blink with his eye. I challenge Christian Prince. I want to debate him. He's not accepting debating me. Everybody is laughing. 
I am the one is challenging you. So instead of calling me and crying like a potato, what about make it happen? Ask yourself why this Farid don't dare and I promise I will never hang up on him. Guys, did I make a promise I will never hang up on him? Did I say that? Did I make a promise if I hang up on him, I am the one who lost the debate? They have no excuse. All of them, they want to debate me face to face because they knew Christian Prince, he don't do this garbage. As simple as that. If they knew I do it, they will not, they will not say face to face. If I say face to face, nobody will show up. I say Skype to Skype, they don't do it. Coward, so you are asking, you want to call me, you call yourself Imam Farra Durra, Batato, you know, sons of Muta. And not only that, this guy, he made a video says, if I am in front of him, Christian Prince will not dare to call me son of Muta. He just admitted that he's a prophet, is a pimp. Because what son of Muta mean? Why you are, why you will be offended by calling yourself Muta? Because your prophet is asking your mother to rent herself for money. As simple as that. You just admitted that your prophet is a pimp. <laughs> Otherwise, you will not be upset. If Muta is marriage, huh? If Muta is marriage, so why you are upset from calling you son of Muta? I am son of marriage. Are you? Obviously, Muta is not marriage. It's a prostitution. And by being he will not dare do Christian Prince dare to say to me in front of my face, son of Muta. My friend, first of all, I don't say to people in front of their face, son of Muta, unless you are debating me. If you are debating me, I will say it to you. I don't see a Muslim in the street and say to him, hey, you are son of Muta. That's not nice. But if somebody is debating me, I will say to him, you are a son of Muta. You are black stone kisser. You are following a child molester. I will give you the list. Because this is the debate. So I have the right to say it. Now prove me wrong. Prove me wrong. You see how Muslims, potatoes, they expose themselves? What kind of a prophet he give a permission to his followers to go and rent a woman for three days, three nights? Are you proud to be a friend of Fifi? who his mother, according to Muhammad, she is allowed to rent herself a three days, three nights. Is he son of a three days rent or four days rent? That's why he don't dare to call me. So they are heroes, but we cannot find them. And you are calling me, you are afraid of him. We asked Mimi Hijab to call me. He hang up on me. I am the one who, who called him. Correct, guys? It's there. He did not take me talk. In less than five minutes I spoke, he hung up on me more than eight times. Hang up on him, hang up on him. And he called me bastard too. And what he do? He played video for me. Did you say that? Did you say to a woman, suckle me? I was reading your prophet, you idiot. And your filthy sister, she was speaking dirty about Jesus. You edit my video. Cowards. They were terrified. He told the Muslims, I'm going to debate the Christian prince himself. And then what happened? Where is the debate? Cowards. Potato. If the master of Mimi Fifi, Mimi Hijab, he called me by Skype, what, what's your problem? And guys, because they are terrified to debate me, so they have those videos set up, and supposedly this will be, will solve the problem. We will play to Christian Prince, uh, him saying, suckle me. Uh, don't you, if, do, you, do you even dare to talk about suckle me issue? What kind of a prophet he ordered Muslim women to do breastfeeding for adult? What kind of God he sent verses, verses, Quran have verses, yes, brother. Quran have verses for breastfeeding for adult. Do you dare? Those are heroes in the front of the Susu girls. They want to be hero in front of the Muslim girls, brother. And he blinked with his eye, you know, from the people of Lut. Habibi, he called me Habibi. Cowards like your prophet. So now, from all the Muslims, we got this potato. 
Why you don't debate, etc. Uh, I, I will debate him right now. Give me a sky. Right now, not tomorrow. Immediately. And we will milk him. Call me idiot. You want to debate me? You are complaining about idiot? You Muslims, first of all, you don't complain. You see, you are a coward. You are a potato. You did not even call to debate me. You are asking me to debate your, your, your stepfather. You don't even have testicles. If you are a man, you will say, I want to debate you. But look what happened. You lost your testicles when because you were, you, you, you maybe, I don't know what happened. You were fighting with some kids in the street. And now you are proud about the testicles of somebody else. What about you? Why well, you don't debate this guy? And we are, okay, where is he? And where are you? Why you don't debate me yourself? Are you a half a human being? Are you a chicken? Huh? You did not drink camel urine like him, so he, have, he drank camel urine, you did not? So he's strong or not? Potato, aren't you ashamed of yourself even to call yourself a man? You are like a bald who is uh, proud about the hair of his neighbor. Here we go, I gave you a chance to call me and to talk to me, and what do you do? Why well, you are afraid to debate this guy? Who? I am afraid, I'm here. My Skype is open. Let him call me. His Skype is open? Give me his Skype, I will call him. Cowards. Everybody can tell who is running. You see, if I say I'm not going to answer his call, then okay, you are right. This guy, he is our, he's, he's avoiding him. I'm here. Where are you? Right? Uh, Adnan uh, Rashid, Adnan Rashid, mm, Christian Prince, he say filthy word. I was quoting your prophet, filthy prophet, you idiot. It's not me. It's not me. If I'm speaking about Jesus, I will never mention those words. I was quoting your filthy prophet. And this is excuse, he will never dare to debate me. And we got him busted. We will prove to you that the Bible is corrupt. You stupid, you just prove to us that Quran of the Bible of Allah is corrupt. So it's what my business. Secondly, you prove to us that your prophet is an idiot. He thinks that Pharaoh is the name of a man. That's why he don't call him. And I prove it. I showed you even Islamic newspapers from Egypt, the capital of Al-Azhar University, saying that Pharaoh in the Quran coming as a name for a person, not a title. Guys, did I show the reference? Did I show the reference or not? Hello? Hello? Oh, finally! You're picking up! Uh, ultimate fart, just get lost. From all the donkeys in the world, we could not find except a donkey. What? Can we come find somebody from Senegal to call us and he have intelligence who we'll finally pick it up? Who? Ultimate fart. You are not even a Muslim. Filthy coward. This is a guy who believe all the scars of Islam are scum back, including the cousin of Muhammad ibn Abbas. He believe that all the Arabs are a fraud, which means Muhammad is a fraud, who believe all the hadith is a fabrication, and he believed that Allah can explain the Quran to you without knowing Arabic, and he is going to give us the answer. <laughs> and he said, the video is there, go on, it's called, Who Cannot Understand the Quran? Go watch it and die laughing. Stupid. The reason we don't waste our time with you, that's it. You're, you know, you are a paper we burned and that's it. You became carbon, that's it. We need something new. Anyone, who's next? Hmm. Uh, uh, Liban, I gave you a chance, you potato, son of Muta. I gave you a chance. I am the one who made the challenge. I am the one who said, call me and we will talk only about Imam Murrah. And if he does not exist, people will laugh at me. 
And what you did? Potato, get out. We have no time for kids. Actually, the first thing I will talk to this Fifi, if he ever dare to let me talk to him, is a Mamura. Just to show everybody that he's a potato. Do you remember, guys, when he made the video, he says the, uh, uh, that in my presentation in the, uh, in the book, the first quotation in my book, it's not cannot be found. And he promised if I can find it, he will apologize and he will become, uh, he will put uh, some, I don't know what he will do. He will do what, some rings in his nose, what, what he will do. <laughs> I challenge Christian friends to find this quotation in the book of Fath al-Bahabari. Nowhere can be found, brothers and sisters. And then the potato, we showed him where it's found. I mean, how this guy, he claimed knowledge and he check it out and he is refuting me and he says he's sure nowhere can be found it. And not only that, the potato, the coward, he made a video saying that Afzal, the one who left Islam, is fake. And they knew the real Afzal. And he had have interview with him. And then the Afzal, the real Afzal, he knew the fake Afzal. He's his friend. Brother, he is my co-student. I know him. He talked to me every day. He's with me in school. So we said to them, okay, if this guy is fake, I want you to expose him. I want you to record this fake Afzal in video. Get him busted. They did not do it. Why? Because they are fraud. They are so desperate. How, how Muslims are leaving Islam left or right? Here we go. I just got a text and you just wait. A lady, I'm not going to say who is she, I don't even know who is she. Her husband and her son, they need my help to leave Islam. And by the help of the Lord, they will. Actually, those who leave Islam under line, which means not online, on air, sorry, under the air, is way more than those who leave Islam on air because many of them, they want to speak to me in private. All what I need to do is just find time to speak to them. Long list of people. Most of them, they don't want to go live on air. And they will leave Islam soon, as soon as we show them the truth. If Muslims, they claim that they have knowledge, then their knowledge will appear. And as you see, we are showing you in the screen whatever we say. Is that a fabrication of a Christian prince? That this is what the Muslim believe? Or I'm showing the screen what they will say. Oh, they say, this guy, his book written about Ibn Abbas 300 years, 300 years after Muhammad, after, hold on, well, Al-Bukhari, he's written the same time too. So how come you accept Al-Bukhari? You see the hypocrisy? If 200 years after Muhammad is not accepted, how you accept all the books about Muhammad is after Muhammad, way after Muhammad? How you accept even Muhammad to tell us about what happened to Jesus 600 years after Jesus? If 200 year book after Muhammad is not accepted by you, suddenly it's not accepted, suddenly it's garbage. Why? Because it's embarrassing. What about Sahih Bukhari? We heard ultimate fart saying all those hadith written by the Arab fraud. Why ultimate fart he says that? Because he's ashamed of what is written there. As simple as that. If Al-Bukhari and Muslim and those books present something good, they will not be ashamed of it. I remember those things was good for centuries for Muslims. Because Muslims, they never face somebody who live between them, dare to debate them. They kill him. Who dare to say Muhammad is a, is, is a fraud? Who dare to say Muhammad is a pimp? They will kill you immediately. Today, the world is different. And they are not the superior. They are the most weak nations. Otherwise, they will bomb everybody. You don't agree with the Prophet, we will kill you, all of you. Imagine, actually, once a Saudi prince, he said to me, uh, he said, thank God, we don't have the power of America. I said, why? He said, if we have the power of America, <laughs> we will do jihad. We will say, convert to Islam tomorrow or die. <laughs> you have 24 hours to accept the Shahada or we will nuke you. As simple as that. Imagine if Trump 
he is a president of the most powerful country and this most powerful country in this earth is a Muslim and his country are Muslims too what will happen to this earth if they are true Muslims but thank God the major powers in this earth are far from the Muslims otherwise this earth is doomed we have Mr. Bijat saying both Jesus and Muhammad let us let us read what this Muslim like sound like he's a nice guy let us read what he's saying at least finally we found somebody he want to reason with us uh, Bijeta saying CP both both Jesus and Muhammad B B O H are prophet okay Bija I want to Bijata I want to stop with you can you show me a prophecy of your prophet before we continue the rest and in Ramadan Muslim don't fast in Ramadan people just flip the day at night and the night at day that's not fasting now you just said Muhammad is a prophet can you show me his prophecies because in order to call a person a prophet you have to prophesy do you have a prophecy can be proven to us that Muhammad is a prophet what do you think Mr. Bijata do you have any prophecy you can give us so we can consider Muhammad because the second you say is a prophet okay what is his prophecy let me prophesy for you tomorrow the sun will come and at sunset the sun will set here we go now do you have a prophecy of Muhammad I mean I'm just using your question you said he's a prophet how he is a prophet all in the Quran okay choose one guys he said Mr. Bijata, he said, all over the Quran, show me one. Show me one, my friend. Here we go. The Quran is in the front of us, and we will open the verses, and we will see if this is true or not. I say, not a single place in the Quran have a prophecy. Not a single verse in the Quran. Prove me wrong. Can you? We'll come, you know, he's Indonesian, no problem. We will come Indonesian Muslims, we love them. Which one, my friend, is a prophecy for you? You can give me one, you can search Google. All the prophecy of Muhammad is lies. He said to the kuffar, you will not believe in what I believe. And they thought they believe in what he believed. Didn't he say you will never believe in what I believe and I will never believe what you believe? Chapter of Al-Kafirun. How he's a prophet. He just told them you will never believe. I will never believe in what you believe and you will never believe in what I believe. And then later of them they believe what they believe. All of them. Give him some time, maybe he is looking in Google, you know, to find some miracles. And you will see that those miracles are a fraud. I will get them busted immediately. If you like to call me, my friend Bejata, let me know. Give me your Skype and I will call you. All right? I will be happy to tell you. You sound like a nice person. Did he post any uh, claim? Every verse in the Quran is a miracle, even you just random pick. Okay, I just did random pick, my friend. And your Quran says, as an example, <clears throat> Allah will give you women with big boobs. Is that the miracle you are talking about? Is that how God he speak? Is that the prophecy Muhammad prophesied for you? That I will go to heaven and I will have a garden full of women with big boobs? This is how prophet of God they speak and they promote their God? 
or this is how this the, the devil he tried to tempt you by boobs what kind of God and what kind of a prophet he says if you believe in me I will give you women with big boobs you tell me do you agree really that your God will give us big books if we convert let us see how many men they will convert hey men in the room in the in, in the and listening how many of you would like to have big books huh I'm sure many of you would like to have big boobs. Allah is the boobs provider. So what your prophet is saying to us, that Allah is a boob vendor. And this is the proof that Muhammad is a prophet. That's it. I'm really convinced. Or what about Muhammad? He promised you that in the heaven, Allah will make you a penis will never go soft. Hmm? Look at this beautiful, and this is Daif, brother. Islam is Daif. Anything is embarrassing for the Muslims is Daif. Huh? Everything is Daif. Let us see. Maybe we have a Muslim. Maybe it's ultimate fault. We will see. Hello? I don't hear you. Hello? Mute you too, please. Hello? Hello? Ultimate fart again. <laughs> I can't run, you idiot. For sure we will run from parking dog like you. You just expose Islam. You are the one who said the hadith is false. The interpretation is false. And all the interpretation of the Muslim scholars is false. And yet you are the one who says to us, if you are a believer, Allah will explain the Quran to you. That means all those who believe in Allah, they did not get the interpretation of the Quran except you. Crazy man, go. Look at this. <clears throat> it's like a bug. You will never speak in my channel. You call me, I spit on you and we hang up on you. Look at this. Look what your prophet said. There is no one whom Allah will admit to paradise, but Allah will marry him to 72 wives, two from the Huris and 70 from the inheritance of the people of hellfire. And whom will have desirable front passages. And he, you know the Muslims, will have a male member that will never become a flaccid, i.e. soft limb. So brother, are you there, Mr. Uh, Dijad? This is the prophecy of your prophet? This is the prophecy of your prophet? Talking about your penis? Your penis will never sleep? Is that the prophecy? Is that how prophet of God speak? Brother Tatar, prophet beat up him. He said, in the heaven, we are going to have a very nice penis. And our penis will never sleep. Brother Tatar, the penis of a Muslim in heaven is going to be always, always active, brother. This is a prophet. Let me introduce Prophet Muhammad, sex sex expert. How shameful to spit on people. No, I spit on people. Why not? 
Why not? This guy, he insulted my mother, insulted my father, he insulted all the Muslims, and he insulted himself. So he deserves a spit. Actually, if I spit on him, he, he should not take a shower for the coming century. It's an honor. And as long as you are speaking about spitting at people, what about your prophet saying to the Muslims, go and buy the penis of your father. So a Muslim now, he is a playing a victim. I say to this filthy man, ultimate fort, who called my father a perverted man and my mother the same. He is saying, if you say I spit on you, shameful thing. Is it shameful when your prophet said, the one who is proud about his inheritance, tell him to go and bite the penis of your father? Oh, sure, no. That's very nice. It's not shameful. Spitting, you say spit? Shame on you. Did you say you will spit on him? Shame on you. What if I show your prophet spitting at people too? What you would do? Potato. Change your name and come back. You've been honored by the spit. Actually, I should take my spit back and wash it. Uh, Muhammad Miracle in Combos Board Range, such as multiplication of food. Where, 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 where we can find this? Guys, look at this. Look at the fabrication Muslim they post for us. Okay, here we go. We have the Quran in front of us, my friend. Show me any of what you said in that chat. In the Quran, manifestation of water, manifestation of water. Let me show you what your prophet said about the manifestation of water. Here we go. You're a prophet. This is a miracle. He used to take shower with dead dogs and women of blood different period. Is that the manifestation of water, my friend? You are talking about? Is that the manifestation of water you are talking about? Your prophet taking shower with dead dogs and women of blood from period and garbage? Is that the one? That's a miracle. This is the Islamic shampoo. If you want to make an Islamic shampoo, brother, this is the recipe. You bring dead dogs and women minstrel rags from period and garbage and then you mix them with water and then you take a shower and that is the islamic shampoo of a prophet muhammad what do you say am i lying it's in the front of you you tell me why you're a prophet saying and doing this you tell me You see, I, I'm not going to say anything. You tell me why he's doing this. Why a prophet, he have full brain. He taught you supposed to be clean as you must have clean. And yet, he is taking shower in a small, tiny water, body of water. He's in the size of a jacuzzi, full of dead dogs and wounded blood of him, period. And the, even the people, they will say to him, you are doing that? You are doing that? Are you? I passed by the prophet, B-B-U-H, when he was performing wudu from the will of Bida. I said, are you performing wudu from it when garbage is thrown in it? He said, water is made pure and nothing make it any pure. See, even the Muslims are asking him, what are you doing, man? You see, the one is walking by is a Muslim. Because he said, Prophet B, P, U, H. He did not say Muhammad. He's speaking to him as a prophet. So he's a Muslim. Pro a Muslim. Uh, actually, not only a Muslim. Abu Sa'id al-Khudari, that his father said, a very well-known Muslim. He passed by Muhammad, and Muhammad jumping in the garbage, taking shower with the dead dogs. And the man, he questioned his behavior, saying, what are you doing, man? Are you? Are you? showering with the will of Bida 
where people they throw their garbage guys is it me who says garbage there or this is the muslim statement Is it me who said the word garbage? I challenge all those who claim to be Muslim Sunni to do what the Prophet did. All of them. I challenge you to make a video about you jumping in a jacuzzi. And before you jump in the jacuzzi, you have to throw a bunch of dead dogs, women rags from period, you don't need to add like a hundred rag, you know, enough to add maybe 10. Huh? And garbage. And not only that, even the hadith says, stink, nothing, nothing. Hmm? You see here, it says in Arabic, the Muslim, they do not translate correctly. It says, ma yukrahu minan natin. What is hated from? The stinky, it is a stinky. It's not only saying garbage, they lie in the translation. Stinky garbage, stinky throwing out stuff. This is the prophet you are talking about. Hmm? Any Abdul? What do you say? Obviously, this behavior cannot be a behavior from a normal man anyway. Forget about him being a prophet or anything. Right? Muhammad is telling his companion, his son-in-law, uh, his son-in-law, Uthman, that the calamity would baffle him, would, would follow with his entering paradise. Uh, what this guy is saying? What? Does anyone understand what this guy is saying? I thought now you are busy taking the recipe for the shampoo. You know what? I'm going to make an Islamic shampoo called Stinky Shampoo. Shampoo, and I put in the in the bowl. I will I will put a, a picture of women rags from menstruation, dead dogs. Their belly is coming out, and the worms are eating them. And I will add some garbage, like you know, uh, uh, bad meat, bad vegetables, bad stuff. And uh, I put them all in, in, in like salad. They are mixed, and I advertise for them halal shampoo. The best way to cure yourself and to fight. And the funny, the Muslim they made videos saying about how to follow the hygiene of the Prophet so you can fight Corona. Do you remember the video of Sabil Ahmed, who said the hygiene of the Prophet is the best way to fight Corona? Here we go. This is the hygiene of the Prophet. This is how we can fight Corona. Hmm? How this is can be a prophet of God? Who is a Muslim want to give us? We will change topic. Who is a Muslim is willing to give us something? You see, forget all the garbage Muhammad he is doing now. This is literally garbage. I mean, he is, he is jumping in the garbage. In case you don't understand what's happening here in the screen, let me let me find you a picture. Uh, because maybe some people they are not getting it yet what we are talking about. Maybe you never know. No, I'm typing in Arabic. I'm searching for pictures. Sometimes I search for things, and after I type like for five minutes, I notice oh, oh, I was typing in the wrong language. Okay. Uh, 
the brother for sure we are not talking about the person in the video we are talking about Muhammad I mean in the screen we will show you some pictures here we go this is a prophet Muhammad peace upon him I just imagine it's him I mean it's not him but imagine swimming in the garbage did you get the idea Alhamdulillah. Huh? Are you getting the idea? How a prophet of God is doing that? Those are poor people. They live in a poor area. God knows what happened to them. Hmm? How a prophet of God, he do such a thing. Explain to me what happened. And the funny, the Muslim, they say to us, Muhammad, he taught us how to be clean, how to be hygiene, how to be all those lies. When Muhammad himself was swimming literally inside the garbage. Muhammad, he put his head under the water. He put his head up, a rag of a Muslim, from a woman menstruation in his head. Or maybe a dead dog. Okay, I found something good for Muhammad. So here we go. We have some rags from women uh, period. We have dead dogs in this, in this uh, small tiny water. And we have uh, garbage and Muhammad is swimming there and Muhammad claimed that water is always pure nothing make it impure and now I have to believe that Muhammad is truly a prophet I mean obviously he is a prophet look at this who can deny that Very simple question, why a man he claimed to be a prophet when I do this? You see here the water is really big, I mean this is maybe like a lake or a river uh, polluted with garbage, but Muhammad was swimming in a tiny space, very tiny space. Why Muhammad when I do that? Any Muslim have any explanation? <clears throat> you know, forget about the Christians, believe or not, you are a Muslim. And now you see that this is a true story, mention in your books. Okay, what is your response to this? Why Muhammad is saying such a statement? Do you have an idea? Any Muslim have an idea? <clears throat> so all what you have for us, Muhammad was a prophet, that's it? You have to explain to us what's happening here. That's not a normal behavior of a human being unless he is a mentally ill. And actually, all the reference prove that Muhammad was mentally ill. In the old days, you know, the Arab, when somebody, he is, he have mental illness, they say that he have a genie. He have a genie. Right? Let us see here. Does the hadith and the stories of Muhammad written by Muslims confirm that Muhammad was mentally ill? Yes. Read. 
once the prophet was bewitched so that he began to imagine that he had done a thing in fact he did not so what happened to muhammad he was bewitched who confirmed that you muslims so now we have to follow a bewitched prophet We have to follow a bewitched prophet. Who in the world want to follow a bewitched prophet? You, you are saying to me he is a bewitched prophet. You see, if I see you in the street and I say, hey, the one who follow a bewitched prophet, you will get upset. Why you are you saying that to me? Why are you are insulting? I am not saying that to you. Aisha said. So, we as a Christian, we should always introduce Muhammad as the bewitched prophet. Whenever you speak to a Muslim, tell him you are a follower of the... It says that, it says that this guy, he lost his mind. Not only he imagined himself done thing, like for certain things, no, everything, including sex. Even Muhammad, when he have sex, he is not sure he had sex or he had... Uh, ice cream look at this as she said the prophet continue for such and such period imagining that he had sexual intercourse with his wives all of them but in fact he did not even his sex it was a fraud so now as long this guy he imagined things is it possible that he imagined he saw an angel is it possible he imagined he spoke or God sent him messages? Is it possible that Muhammad is hearing voices? Yes. Actually, Muhammad, he said in different hadith that when he received inspiration from Allah, from Jibreel, يُفْصَمُ anni. يُفْصَمْ You know, you can go and ask anyone. If somebody has double personality, they say, لديه انفصام الشخصية double personality Muhammad he hear voices of the angel and how the voice of the angel come to him as a sound of a bell read it and that is the most severe why revelation is severe and why revelation is coming as a sound of a bell and since when Muhammad he understand language is called the bell language Think about it. Let us say you are Muhammad and now you receive inspiration from Allah as a sound of a bell. Hmm? Allah gave you a verse. Okay, how the verse look like, sound like? Bell. How the bell sound like? I mean, all of us, we knew how the bell sound like, right? Or maybe like this. Or maybe like that. So now, Muhammad received this. How we get it in Arabic Quran? Correct, guys? Allah, he gave him a revelation as a sound of a bell how the sound of the bell became Arabic read it he gave him a sound of a bell then we have Arabic Quran Okay, I want you to translate to me to a verse in the Quran. Go ahead, Muhammad. Muhammad, I'm waiting for you. Okay, translate this to me to Arabic, please. This is madness. This is stupidity. Yeah, in different place, Muhammad, he says that Shaitan, he is the one who used bell. He forbid the Christian from using the bell because the bell is a sound instrument, the musical instrument of Shaitan. 
So how the musical instrument of shaitan became the musical instrument of Allah of revelation? But I have a solution for this. Allah is a very toporous smart. He installed inside the Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, a very special coding. So when the Prophet, he, uh, he received the bill verses, uh, Allah Ah, that makes sense. It's obvious. Allah gave him a ring. Muhammad, he used Morse code. He translated to Arabic. It's obvious. It's like light. It's so clear. Very easy. Hmm? Can you put Bukhari hadith number 6002? I don't know. Those those numbers mean nothing to me. What hadith? Is about? Tell me what uh, tell me what the hate is about. I don't remember those hadith by their numbers. They are stupid numbers. Their numbers are not even real. Where is the Muslims who want to tell us what's happening? So obviously we have a madman. He hear voices. I mean, how in the world and why Allah want to give him the instrument of shaitan? How Muhammad, he, he said clearly that angels do not accompany somebody he have a bell with him. So how they are coming to him with the sound of the bell? Huh? The Prophet said the bill is one of the musical instrument of shaitan. Thank you, Prophet, for your wisdom. True story. I heard Allah Messenger saying the angels do not enter a house in which there is a small bell. Well, that's not a big deal, Mesto. If a small child, he pisses on Muhammad, I mean, so what? Let us be uh, something real, you know? I mean, the guy, he's holding a child, the child he pee. Okay. That's not a big deal. That's not that will not make Muhammad a bad person. But what will make Muhammad is bad person is st stupid that he claimed that you should just put little water if a if a boy pee on you, but you have to wash if a child girl she pee on you. For women are dirty for Muhammad. If you go in the hadith. Let us see if I can find it. Here we go. The urine of a female child should be washed. And the urine of a male child should be sprinkled over. Do you see it? Do you see it? That will make it stupid. But a, a child, he pee on Muhammad. What a big deal. Not a big deal. Do we have any Muhammadan? Even if he chewed, the date will not be a problem, but the problem will be to suck the tongue of a child. That is the problem. My friend, try to find something to use against somebody. It is really serious. If I chew food for a child, maybe he cannot eat, and I put it in his mouth. That is not a crime. Maybe it sounds disgusting for you, but it's not a big deal. But sucking the tongue of a child, that is a different story. And that's what Muhammad did. So if you want to find something, try to find something really. It make it make a point, prove a point. Don't do what the Muslim do. Do we have any Muslim want to share want to share with us anything about Muhammad to make him a prophet? Anyone?
Anyone? Yeah, and yeah, as exactly. If you sprinkle some water in the in the in the child urine, you did not clean it. It's still there, correct? Stupid, isn't it? You see, like wash from the child of the female uh, urine, but if it's a boy, just a sprinkle. And the funny, you know, uh, 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 Muslims they don't even sprinkle if dogs they pee inside the mosque. <clears throat> you read it and this is Sahih Bukhari dogs used to go inside the mosque of Allah Prophet during the lifetime of Allah Apostle the dogs used to go urinate and pass through the mosque come and go nevertheless they never used to sprinkle water on it what urine of dogs do you see it True or false? Allah Messenger poured water over his private part and washed him with his left hand, and you know, and yeah, and he dry his hand in the wall. And he dry his hands on the wall. You are missing a part. Let us see. I try to find you the one. Where it says he dry his hands on the wall. I'm trying to remember the hadith. One of the miracle of Prophet Muhammad, he told the companion armor Bani Yasser that unjust party would kill him. Okay. You must be Shia then, aren't you? You must be Shia. My friend, let me answer you about this uh, uh, unjust party will kill him. So how your prophet could not predict if he himself will die or will be killed? Read with me and love. Is that your Quran or this is my book? Chapter 3 verse 144. Muhammad is no more than a messenger. And the messengers, all of them, they pass away, by the way. The translation is false. It says all the messengers before him pass away. So if he died or we are slain, why Allah don't say if he will die? Why he say if he die or we are slain? The answer is very simple. Muhammad is, a, is a, you know, he don't know how he will die. He, he killed a lot of people. So it's possible he will be killed. It's possible he will die normally. So now I will make a prophecy. If a Christian prince die on or get killed, and then whatever happened, I, I will be true prophet. So your prophet, he was not able to predict how he will die, and yet he predict Amaru Yasser. Hmm. All oh, those stories are fabrications. Just to show you how stupid what, what, the, what they bring to us. If Muhammad, he predict as a prophet that Ammar ibn Yasser would be killed by an unjust party, shouldn't that come to him in the Quran? Did, who, who is the one who told him that? Allah. Okay, where is the verse says Ammar ibn Yasser will be killed by an unjust party?
What do you think? Because if Allah taught Muhammad something, it's going to be in the Quran. And if you say to me in the Hadith, that's mean Muhammad, he did not have his religion in the Quran. He have it in the Hadith. Because that's mean Allah, he taught him that. So uh, what Allah said to him? Allah said to him, show us how this happened. How Allah, he said to him, that is a guy, his name is Yasser ibn Ammar, is going to die, and how he will die, but this is not in the Quran. So what you just confirmed to me right now, if this story is true, that Muhammad, Quran, is in the Hadith, not in this book in the front of us. You see what you just did? You just created a new book for you Muslims, and now you follow that book, you don't follow the Quran. The Quran says that Muhammad, he have no miracles, and speaking about the future is a miracle. Isn't it the Quran say, he, Allah, he refrain from sending miracles? وَمَا مَنَعَنَا أَنْ نُرْسِلَ بِالْآيَاتِ Chapter 17, verse number 59. We refrain. Muhammad, he uh, quenched the thir thirst of thousands of his soldiers during the battle of Tabu and embleed them to use water for ablution after causing war. Get out of here, man. Just get out of here. Let's see this talk to you. We just showed you your prophet taking shower with garbage and talking about your prophet told them to do a... a Get, get out. We have no time for kids. We have Quran. The Quran says we refrain from sending miracles. So either the Quran lying or you are lying. Did Allah refrain from giving miracle to Muhammad? The Quran say yes. Chapter 17, verse number 59. So you Muslims, you fabricate stories and you speak against the Quran. Allah refrain. Did Allah refrain or he did not refrain? How Allah, he says, he refrained from giving miracles to Muhammad and now you are saying to me, Muhammad, he had. That's mean this verse in the Quran is a fabrication. Which one of you is telling the truth? Actually, the Shia books, this guy is a Shia, obviously. The Shia books is full of garbage. You will not believe it. Like the Sunni books, they have a books like a Hadith about uh, Muhammad. He ordered the trees to come to come and cover him in shade when he's doing his poo-poo. Because he don't want anyone to see him doing poo-poo, supposedly. Praise be to Allah. And the trees came, walked to him. And there's other story about trees. They come to him and they, they converted to Islam. And they said Shahada. They were in the other side of the valley and Muhammad he command the two trees and the trees they came walking in their belly and then they stood in the front of the Prophet and they said Shahada and then the Prophet told them go back true story but yet we cannot find anything in the Quran and the Quran says we refrain from sending signs so why those stories can be found in the Hadith but cannot be found in the Quran. Why Allah, he mentioned to us a miracles of Musa, Isa, I mean, many prophets, but when it's come to Muhammad, the miracle of Muhammad is not exist in the Quran. For it is fabrication. If Muhammad have a miracle, you know, the, if, if we search here, how many times people they were asking Muhammad about giving a miracle, or giving a sign? It's endless. And Muhammad saying, keep saying that they keep asking me for a miracle. Read. Even though word to bring to the people of the book, the sign, all the sign together, they will not believe. But this is me, Muhammad is a false prophet too. Isn't it Khadija? She is from the people of the book and she is the first to convert to Islam. Isn't you Muslim today, you say to us, there's, there's a Christian, they are converted to Islam. 
But the Quran says, if you bring them all the miracles in the world, they will not convert to Islam. Make an excuse not to bring any miracle. Do you see it? They ask the people of Israel, how many miracles we gave them? So why you don't give Muhammad a miracle? Huh? Here, uh, the story of uh, a person, his name is Zechariah, and when the angel or, uh, or uh, Allah, he spoke to him, or the angel spoke to him, telling him that he will have a child. And look how easy that God, he gave a miracle to him. He says to him, uh, can you make me give, me, give me a sign from you, a proof that this would happen. Huh? Give me a proof that my wife, she will have a child, even though she is an old woman. Make me not to speak for three days. Listen carefully, he said, oh my Lord, give me a sign. The sign was the answer shall be that that shall speak no man to three days. So the guy, he went to mute for three days. How come Allah cannot do the same to Muhammad? Muhammad, he split the moon in the Quran. My friend, even the Quran never says so. That is a fabrication of the Muslims. Muhammad, he report that he saw the moon split and judgment day is near. Where it says Muhammad split the Quran, read it, which is a false prophecy. Muhammad he claimed that the moon split ascender, cleft ascender, and the judgment day is near. So the judgment day started. Is the moon split? No. Is it still there? Yes. Do we have it to pieces? No. So Muhammad the fool he saw eclipse in his time, and he. Actually, this is a poetry by a guy, his name is Umrul Qais, and we made a video about it. It says exactly the same as Muhammad is having the Quran. Let me find you the poetry. And the Muslim, they fight this poetry everywhere. They will not let it published, but we preserve it. We have it preserved. It's too late. This is the poetry of Imru al-Qais, which Muhammad, he took the Quran from it. All those lines you see in black, all those black lines, those words underneath or in the top of them, it is a verse Muhammad, he took it, he put it in the Quran. Look how many. Look how many. He took the sentence as it is and he put it in the Quran. Look how many. As it is. Here it says, Dinat is sa'a wan shaq al-qamar. Muhammad, he replaced the word Dinat with the word Iqtarabat. But Dinat and Iqtarabat, they are the same. But Dinat, it fit better as a poetry, more strong. So he replaced this word, but the rest is the same. and if we go and check we will find that the same sentence exists exactly in the Quran And by the way, this poetry is very beautiful. So what this poetry is about, the guy is speaking about his beloved girlfriend, or let us say the one, woman he loved. So he said, the, 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 the hour is, uh, is, uh, is near and the moon is split. He's talking about his girlfriend. عَنْ غَزَالٍ صَادَ قَلْبِي وَنَفَرْ From a deer who hunted my heart and ran away. He's speaking about a girl. أَحْوَرٌ قَدْ حُرْتُ فِي أَوْصَافِهِ She have a very beautiful eyes. He is like, you know, like she have a sleepy eyes, which is so like supposedly beautiful and, 
and she have like a liner in her eyes and amazing beautiful Muhammad he took it he make Quran if we search for those sentences we will find them all over the Quran Na'isu al-Tarf Faramani fata'ata fa'aqar Fata'rakani kahashim al-Muhtadar And this is a guy who has existed before Muhammad And he is a Christian In the worst scenario, he was a Nasara. So, in the chapter of the moon, where Muhammad he says the moon split ascender, he got himself busted actually because he copied a poetry of a person who exists before him. In the same time, he made statement that the moon split. And now the Muslim they believe the moon is split, but there is no moon split. You can go and check anywhere. Nobody, the Muslim they posted for us a picture from NASA saying the moon is split. For what? It's a valley in the moon. We have many valleys in the earth. When you say split, split, it's maybe came two pieces. Not a valley. We have a valley in earth. Is the earth split? No. We have one of the biggest valleys in America in the world. It's called the Grand Canyon. Does that mean the earth is split? No. So Muhammad, he saw an eclipse. And then he praised Allah saying, this is a sign of a judgment day. Run away. And nothing happened 14 years ago. Do you see it? Anyway, guys. Uh, I think we have enough for today. Uh, we hope to see you soon again. Feel free to cut my videos, make them short. If you like, want to cover one topic at a time, you can do that if the video is so long. Like now, we spoke about this false miracle. We explained it. You can cut the video and make it just maybe five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever I spoke about this topic. So always you can cut my videos, make them shorter. In order to translate your language and if you are a person who speak any of the following languages please contact me korean chinese japanese if you speak any of those languages all right we need people to translate for us so we can prevent those people from being lied to the muslims are targeting them all right yeah, no, no, Sudan, the person who is not a prophet, but he have a book and he have many things come to be true. Not like Muhammad, nothing in Muhammad he said come to be true. Nothing, not even one, not even a single one. All right. Uh, is that the particular verse after Waraka died? We don't know really. I mean, the Islamic history is very confusing. There is no history. You see, when, when Muslims, they receive their history, they say, we receive it from uh, Ibn Ishaq. But the fact, they don't have the book of Ibn Ishaq. Where is the book of Ibn Ishaq? I want to read it. They have books written from a student of a student, a student, and all those students, each one of them, he says in the introduction, there's many hadith are not suitable to be attached to the prophet, so we delete them. So imagine how much the filtering happened and how much story we are missing about Muhammad. They throw them away. Anything will not be suitable up to the one who is collecting the story, he throw it away. So you can tell that the stories of Muhammad are gone. We don't have really his stories. What we have is the filtration which Muslims who worship Muhammad trying to make Muhammad look a perfect guy. So all the garbage we have about Muhammad swimming in the garbage is about them trying to make him the perfect garbage guy. So imagine if this is after filtration. So how it was before the filtration. You know what I mean? 
if this is after the shampoo <laughs> do you understand if I say to you anything will insult the prophet we took it away anything will not look will make will not make the prophet look good I took it away and then you find that Muhammad taking shower with dead dogs and women blood of him period so how much garbage we are going to read about Muhammad and they took it away I'm speaking to a Muslim my, my friend I'm just done for today I apologize I got to go str maybe tomorrow my friend maybe tomorrow you can give me this Muslim he can call me I will